afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the August 9th City of Gulf Shores Council meeting. I'll call the meeting to order and ask Councilman G Steve Jones if he'll uh, lead us with the invocation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Would y'all join me in thanks, please? Father God, thank you for every seat that has been filled here today. For each mind and heart that fills the presence of this room, we thank you. Only you know truly what we are setting out to accomplish today. We have an idea, a vision, hints, and daily instructions. We have talents, abilities, and time to work. However, only you can see in perfect detail the end of every beginning, every project, every season, every life. Nothing is ever in vain, for even mistakes and missteps are used for good. Please be with us now as we set about this business of and for our citizens. Instill in us a spirit of calmness, clarity, and discernment as we wrestle with the best courses of action in the light of this increasing pandemic. Have us not only think of ourselves, but our visitors and vendors, and to do our best to do what is right and what is fair. Please fill those that work to protect and care for us with strength, courage, and swiftness that they will rise each day and return home safely each night. We are grateful for this piece of earth that we occupy by your grace and are mindful that it is a gift from you that we are able to cherish and not abuse. We, the people of Gulf Shores, thank you and pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. One of you call roll, please. Mr. Garris? Here. Mr. Harris? Here. Dr. Dykin? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mayor Kraft? Here. First item of business tonight is we have two sets of minutes to review and approve. The first set are those of the regular council meeting of July the 26th. Motion approved July 26th, regular council meeting 2021. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this uh, these minutes as presented. Any discussion, comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those minutes are approved. The next set is for last Monday's August 2nd Council Work Session meeting minutes. Move for approval of the minutes from August 2nd, 2021. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve these minutes as presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any that wouldn't didn't make it abstain? <laughs> abstain. <laughs> abstain. The rest of y'all can all abstain. Uh, short work. We, we'll have to trust you on all this. Yeah. Those, I those hope minutes, you read those minutes. Those minutes are approved. <laughs> the next item is the approval of expense uh, vouchers in the amount of $1,074,179.17. Cindy, any, any additional update? Thank you. Cindy. Move for the approval of the expense vouchers as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve these expense vouchers as they were presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those expense vouchers are approved. We now move to uh, proclamations and petitions, requests, and communication. We've got our child here, cancel, childhood cancel, cancer awareness month. Matt? Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, council, Mr. Mayor. Uh, very special proclamation tonight. Um, and when I take pride in reading as a, I have family that have recovered as well. And uh, I know this is very dear to uh, some people in our city as well as many in the audience. But um, as the mayor said, with your permission, uh, I'd like to read a, our proclamation. Um, Whereas childhood cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in children, one in 285 children in the United States will be diagnosed by their 20th birthday. 46 children per day or 16,790 children per year are di diagnosed with cancer in the U.S. And whereas there are approximately 40,000 children on active treatment at any given time, the average age of diagnosis is six years old compared to 66 years for adults cancer diagnosis. 80% of children or childhood cancer patients are diagnosed late with metastatic disease 
And whereas two thirds of children cancer patients will have chronic health conditions as a result of their treatment toxicity, toxicity with one quarter being classified as severe and life-threatening. And whereas in the last 20 years, only four new drugs have been approved by the FDA to specifically treat childhood cancer, the National Cancer Institute recognizes the unique research needs of childhood cancer and the associated need for increased funding to carry this out. And whereas researchers and healthcare professionals work diligently dedicating their expertise to treat and cure child children with cancer, it is vital that those affected by childhood cancer have access to quality, affordable care and the research and that research of all forms of childhood cancer continues to be vigorously supported. And whereas too many children are affected by this deadly disease and must be done and more must be done to raise awareness and find a cure, the determination and bravery for which these children fight their battles against cancer should be recognized and committed by all. Now, therefore, on behalf of Robert Kraft, Mayor of Gulf Shores, Alabama, along with the City Council, I do hereby pro proclaim September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in Gulf Shores in order to help raise awareness of pediatric cancer and its victims. And Mr. Mayor, with that, um, I believe we do have Melissa Bird of Jensen's Heart of Gold, as well as uh, Jennifer Berry of Berry Strong Foundation here in our um, audience. And I believe they would like to say a few things if, if they could, and then the mayor can present this proclamation to you. Hello everyone, I'm Leon Bird. I'm vice president of Jensen's Heart of Gold. Melissa is the uh, president. Our son is Jensen. And uh, I'd like to thank the mayor, the council, the administrative staff for, for recognizing this, this important cause. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really dear to us, the community leaders coming together, the community coming together to help those struggling through. Trying to make memories during those uh, dire times is tough. We know it. And to see everybody come together to help others is, is really great. In a small town, big support, and we thank you for it. I just want to add to that that um, Mayor Kraft, thanks to you and the council and the support of the city, um, through Jensen's Heart of Gold, we've been able to minimize our expenses and uh, allow 100% of our proceeds to go to these families in need. Um, with over $162,000 raised just last year alone, I'm very proud to say that in the last 10 years, we've been able to um, support dozens of families and we've raised over $130,000 across the East Coast. We wouldn't be able to do that without your support and, and dedication to our cause. And um, we're, you know, we built a legacy in our son's name and we're very grateful for you um, allowing us to do that. Um, Jennifer Berry is Berry Strong Foundation. She's actually started this campaign throughout the entire county for the proclamation. So I'll let her say a few words. Really just wanted to take a few minutes to thank Mayor Kraft and the City of Gulf Shores for officially proclaiming September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, when I first started this foundation three years ago, it was in memory of my 15-year-old daughter Caroline who passed away from childhood cancer. And, um, she passed away on Thanksgiving morning, and she was very vocal and just really adamant about and, and being an advocate for childhood cancer. She didn't really always necessarily think of herself in those last few months of her life. She wanted to make things better for everyone, so that's why I'm here and why I do what I do. But um, with this proclamation, we were really hoping that it would bring awareness and education to childhood cancers and highlight the need for more funding. So I really appreciate everyone for being here and doing this for us. Um, I'm also really kind of overwhelmed with the amount of support we've received with our proclamation initiative, and I'm so thankful to the City of Gulf Shores for being the first in four counties so far, our, our cities in Baldwin County so far, to proclaim um, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in September, and y'all really are doing it better than I ever thought you would, so thank you so much. Thank you. Well, with Jensen's, with our relationship with the family, Jensen's fight was ours. We were like family. We, we went through that with you. We prayed for him every day. We suffered the loss like you did. So it's easy for us to support this, having that kind of personal relationship and feeling how they feel to lose a child cancer. So we're glad to do this and we're, we're sorry that we have to, but we certainly are in full support not only of the two of you as you continue forward with Vincent's Heart of Gold and also with any other childhood cancer programs we support completely. So 
that this for you? Do we have someone who will take a picture? Next, we have uh, Gulf Shores Fire Rescue Introduction and Swearing-In Ceremony, Chief Sealy. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to tell you how appreciative I, have, I am of you, Mayor Kraft, and the council, and Steve, and Cindy, and everybody, and, and the whole community of their support of us and giving us the tools and the resources to be able to protect our citizens. And that, uh, tonight, I want to kind of show you what that looks like. Uh, three new hires, I want to introduce them. If you'll come up front. Um, uh, we have three three that we were able to hire, and I think you'll see some consistency as I introduce them um, in some of the things that they do. First is John Tinoco. He is a, uh, come on up a little bit. You, you can all stand right there. John is a uh, uh, graduate of Gulf Shores High School, and he started working on the beach at Orange Beach. He's a USLA lifeguard and started working on the beach two years ago. And he's had a dream of working for Gulf Shores Fire Rescue for for that amount of time. I think probably before that, um, he, uh, he he shows up and, and when I say he rides on our trucks all the time, I mean, he was like a regular guy. I mean, he's always there, always in gear, getting dirty. He's always the first one to do things and nonstop work. And he proved himself among his peers. And if I didn't hire him, I believe our department would run run me off. So they, uh, they are very high on him and so, so am I. Uh, very proud to have him. Um, Cole Fincher, is is the next individual cole is uh has been working on our beach on our beach here for seven years cole has two family members that work for the city very uh for uh, quite a while now i understand um he's dedicated as well he's been a, a firefighter for for some time and came to us his dream i think over the last four or five years has been get, to get here as well one interesting thing i got to tell a story about cole Back during the hurricane last year, he was working on the beach, but he came over and worked on during the hurricane. Worked on a truck, and I don't know if you know firemen very well, but they like to play jokes on each other. And so there's a new sheriff in town, and there's a new chief in town, and these a lot of strict regulations and all that. Well, they told Cole that I didn't like mustaches, so Cole went in the bathroom, and shaved his mustache off. <laughs> so I say that to say that that stuck with me, and that tells me somebody that wants to serve our community that that he's willing to do that. So a very that doesn't say that's just a thing that stuck out to me that how how dedicated he is that didn't, didn't even question anything he wanted to work here and whatever it took so uh ashley bernard last october i was going to hire I, I didn't have enough spots so i did i was not able to hire ashley at that time and one of the most difficult conversations i sat down with ashley and i told her i said look i can't hire you this time and i could see the look of devastation in her face and Ashley's a young lady that's from Steele, Alabama, outside of Gaston. Went to the University of West Alabama, was a cheerleader. Got into firefighting, took the firefighting class, wants to work for Gulf Shores. Moved down here on her own, started working on our beach with the dream of serving our community. So when I told her that, it hurt me too. But I also knew I had a plan for it. And I told her, I said, if you continue to prove yourself around here just like everybody else does, you'll have an opportunity one day. And so the, two days later, I look out there, she's taking a physical fitness test, wasn't required of her. She's in there cleaning the fire station, wasn't required of her. She's riding and, and proving herself among her peers. So I'm very proud to offer her a job this time around. So we're very proud of her. All three of them, if you see the common threads, sincere desire to work for our city and serve our, our work here, not just in the fire service, but to work here. All three, three, life, or all three of them are lifeguards. And uh, I, I couldn't be more proud of them. So this time, I'm not going to forget to swear them in. It's the last time I did. So raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I state your name. As a firefighter in the city of Gulf Shores. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the state of Alabama. I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially 
Discharge the duties of a firefighter to the best of my ability and will honor and respect the mission, rules, guidelines, and policies of the City of Gulf Shores and Gulf Shores Fire Rescue. I recognize the badge of my position as a symbol of public faith and trust and I pledge to uphold the honor and integrity of the fire service. I further affirm that I have the qualifications required of my position and that I swear to uphold the Gulf Shores Fire Rescue Corps values of competence, courage, and compassion. So help me God. Congratulations. Welcome to the board. Thank you, Chief. We've got another presenta presentation I'd like to call Fred Steiner to come forward. Thank you, Mayor Kraft, council members. Joe, I hadn't seen Joe in a while. Both of us getting up in age. Anyway, I thank you for this opportunity to come down and speak with you this afternoon. Uh, I'm part of what is called the National Sojourners. And uh, that's a nation, it's approximately 100 years old. We had our 100th birthday last year. Uh, and we're a patriotic organization. It's composed of veterans and masons. And what we do is we promote patriotism. And I don't have to tell you, patriotism is not a popular subject in this country today, other than the Deep South. And last year we had a we had a, a program in October to honor to honor first responders. A little background on first responders on October night October 2017, Congress authorized a first responder day to thank those people in the back of the room and those new firemen, and I want to congratulate them while I'm, while I'm speaking. Uh, but it didn't get off the ground very well. Most people never heard of a first responder day. Well, we want to bring it to the attention of the people in Baldwin County. First responder day is to honor the people in blue, the firefighters, all of our EMCs, all IMC people, we want to say thank you. This year, we plan to have it in Foley, Alabama. And we're going to do it at the Heritage Park outside. We'll have the American Legion uh, motorcycle riders. They'll be there. We'll have the Purple Heart from Mobile. They'll be there. And we'll have the Boy Scouts post the colors. And uh, last year, the mayor and the fire chiefs gave a short speech. Uh, it's, the program hasn't been written yet, but you know we will invite you to, if you want to speak, firemen, especially the chiefs and the police and the fire department and the mayors, uh, you'll be welcome to, uh, to uh, say thank you to your people. Uh, if the city of Gulf Shores, and I assume that they will participate in this program, we'd like the city administrator to be our point of contact because they are our point of contact in both Orange Beach and Gulf Shore and uh, Foley. So it's easier for us to contact one point of contact that can talk with the people here in the front rather than us try to individually talk to different people. So anyway, that's what we'd like to do. Last year we took up donations and the donations went to the fire department 
in Baldwin County. This year, it's going to a police charity. So any funds that's collected, any funds that's left over, will go to a police charity this year. Uh, that will support Baldwin County. Uh, I think last year we had the COVID going on and we had about 60, 65 people there and we fed them. And uh, we want to do that again this year. We want to give them something to eat. It won't be anything big, but we'll give them something to eat. Uh, we had a first responder medal that we passed out to the uh, first responders. And, uh, and this program also honors veterans. So any veterans in the area are invited to come and we'll have a veterans pin to give each one of the veterans that's there. And this is a reminder to say thank you. And let me tell you, this is, you see this thing on TV where these, you have a lot of these little sleepy towns, you know, and nothing happens. But you know, Gulf Shores had 7 million visitors every year. And you know who their first point of contact is? These people back here. You know, that's the first point of contact. And you know, and they keep us safe. Uh, when they get up in the morning, they have no idea. It's not the residents of Gulf Shores they're going to come in contact with. It's that 7 million other people that's coming here from other places. So they never know what they're going to run into during the day. And, uh, you know, I don't think we do enough to say thank you. We appreciate your service, and we want to honor you, especially this one day. Mr. Mayor, that, I'm going to introduce Earl Richardson. He's also with the National Sojourner, and he was a military policeman during the service, so thank he's you. a little bit in those more uh, for been, police. Been there, done that. Turn around. Thank y'all. Military police, ex fireman, ex ambulance supervisor. So been there and done that. Thank you all. Appreciate it. <laughs> Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Thank you for allowing us to be in this wonderful facility. My job is real simple. Uh, Fred flew helicopters. Uh, I cut down on theft. It was my job in Vietnam. So uh, we, we come from a little bit different background. Down here in this area, Baldwin County lost a uh, deputy sheriff out in the waters over at Fort Morgan. And we, we're losing people in blue on a regular basis. So guys, keep your head down. But mine's simple, Mayor. I'm the fundraiser. We need some money to help put this thing on on October the 23rd. If you can find your way at all possible to proffer anything you would put forward, we would greatly appreciate. Thank you very much. Thank you. And appreciate you being here. Thank you. Matt, you've got a couple of uh, public assembly permits for us to consider. Yes, sir. Well, those are tough ones to follow right there. I'll try to do my best. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, as you recall from last week, uh, the first assembly permit was the sixth annual uh, Bloody Mary 5K run and walk. Uh, this is uh, presented by Harley Sports in cooperation with Tacky Jacks. Uh, it's September 4th and uh, five to 600 people. Um, Tacky Jacks has provided a letter of approval and it's ready for your approval. Thank you, Matt. Any questions for, for Matt on this public assembly permit? Move for the approval of public assembly permit application for the Bloody Mary 5K run. Second. I have a motion and a, and a second to approve this assembly permit as, as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That assembly permit is approved. One more, Matt. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the second one, as you recall from last week, is the Shaka Beach Bash Adult Volleyball Tournament. This is um, presented by the Hangout and Island Sand Volleyball. Uh, August 27th through the 29th, 
approximately 200 uh, people has been vetted and ready for your approval. Any questions from Matt on this assembly permit? Move for approval of the public assembly permit application for the PIVC Hangout Shaka Beach Bash. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this permit as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? The permit is approved. Matt, you've got one more, an equipment le a proposal, this resolution 6441. Yes, sir. As you'll recall from last week, this is a uh, proposal to accept a lease proposal from Jerry Pate Turf and Irrigation in the amount not to exceed uh, $253,000, 35, I'm sorry, 253, 35.92 for four Toro Real Master mowers. And there's no changes. Thank you, Matt. Move for the adoption of resolution 6441 and waive its reading. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt this resolution as presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6441 is approved and adopted. Next, we have resolution 6442. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, as you recall, last week, uh, Grant did a phenomenal presentation on this. This is the uh, resolution to authorize the mayor to execute a professional service contract with McKee and Associates Architecture um, for for an amount not to see $42,000. And this is for the development of our 12 court pickleball facility at Sportsplex. And there's no changes, sir. Thank you, Matt. It's uh, resolution 6442. Motion to adopt resolution 6442. Second. Have a motion and a second to adopt this resolution and that's submitted. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6442 is approved. <laughs> Thank you. Jason, is that your fan club? <laughs> <laughs> Jason's been lobbying hard for you. <laughs> Next item, we have Mike. Uh, you got something for us, so 6443 resolution. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is a contact renewal between Unity Fiber for a term of five years. This agreement includes continued use of our fiber optic connections throughout the city. We will be increasing our network speeds from 500 meg to one gig. Um, this increase will eliminate any latency issues that we have on our network, so our, our surveillance for our video cameras uh, won't be delayed. Funded, funding for this is included in our budget for 2021, and the modified speed does not increase the overall service price. We are reckoning, recommending approval, and I'll answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Mike. Any questions for Mike on Resolution 6443? Move for the adoption of Resolution 6443 and waive its reading. Second. I have a motion and a second, a sec, second to approve this resolution as submitted. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6443 is approved. Next, we have Resolution 6444. Wanda? Yes, sir. Uh, John McCormick, who was a longtime uh, Gulf Shores Utility Board member, passed away recently. So uh, Blake Phelps has been nominated to fulfill Mr. McCormick's term, which will end on April the 1st, 2023. Blake is our city's economic development coordinator. And the bylaws state that we can have up to three board members who are city officials on that board. So that works out just fine. So we've prepared a resolution for council consideration. Before we say anything about that, I want to pay a special mention to John McCormick. Philip and I serve on that board. Fine gentleman, a great addition to that board. Uh, lived at Craft Farms and uh, was just a, a great, great asset and benefit to the community. Him volunteering his skills to help us for no pay at the utility board was a sight. It was well, well, well received, Philip. I spoke a little bit about him last week. Just his commitment to the community. He loved what he did and serving in that capacity. Just an opportunity for John to give back. Uh, he was a great asset uh, to our utility company and to Gulf Shores. And uh, he will be missed. That's for sure. Uh, resolution 6444. Move for the adoption of Resolution 6444 and waive its reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve and adopt Resolution 6444. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6444 is approved. Blake, thanks for agreeing to serve in that position. Got big shoes to fill. Next item is 6445, Mark, uh, bid, accepting bid for asphalt services. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the annual streets resurfacing uh, contract. This is for fiscal year 2021. I'm recommending awarded to Asphalt Services Incorporated, who was the lowest conforming bidder. Um, we're recommending it be awarded based on the unit bid pricing provided in their seal bid, so we'll have the opportunity to utilize this contract throughout the remainder of the year. Uh, in this year's scheduled work is Wallace Circle, Shady Woods Court, uh, the southern portion of Augusta Drive in Craft Farms North, West 8th Avenue, uh, which is at Hardy's, and then West Fairway uh, to complete that project up. So those are the projects in this year's uh, project list, and they're all subject to uh, funding availability, but we're recommending one into Asphalt Services Incorporated so we can get started immediately. Thank you, Mark. Any questions for Mark on 6445? Move for the adoption of resolution 6445 and waive its reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 6445 as presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6445 is approved. The next item is ordinance number 2033, this is the award construction demolition C&D franchises. Mark? Yes, uh, we received two new applications uh, for construction C&D roll-off container franchises. Uh, the first of which is uh, Rock and Roll-Offs, and the second is ABM Waste Management LLC. We've uh, done background checks on both companies, and they've both been serving other communities for several years and are very uh, reputable. So we are recommending awarding these two franchises uh, to start upon fully executed franchise agreement and will be uh, concluded through December 31st, 2025, which lines up with the rest of the C&D franchises that are held in the city. Thank you, Mark. Any questions for Mark on, on Ordinance 2033? Move that we suspend rules of procedure that we may consider the ordinance. Second. I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Wanda, will you call roll? Mr. Garris. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Dr. Dykin. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Mayor Kraft. Aye. The rules are suspended. We're free to consider ordinance 2033. Motion to consider ordinance 2033 is presented. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 20, 20, 2033 <laughs> as presented. Wanda? Mr. Garris. Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Dr. Dykin? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mayor Crow? Aye. Ordinance 2033 is approved and adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Andy, we got Ordinance 2034, which is an approved an annexation quest, request at Stout Lane. Yes, sir. There are no changes from last week, but I will give you all a quick update since a few of you are missing from the meeting. Um, this is the annexation request for 19090 Stout Lane made by Mr. and Ms. Robert Sheehan. Uh, the property is developed with a single family house. Upon annexation, it will be zoned R14, single family residential. And the reason for the request is so that their granddaughter can attend the City of Gulf Shores school system. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Andy. Resolu or ordinance 2034. Move that we suspend rules of procedure that we may consider the ordinance. Second. The motion, uh, uh, <clears throat> Wanda McCall roll. Okay. Mr. Garris. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Dr. Dykin. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Mayor Kraft. Aye. The rules are suspended. We're free to consider ordinance 2034. Move to approve and adopt the ordinance 2034. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance as presented. Wanda. Mr. Garris. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Dr. Dykin? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mayor Kraft? Aye. Ordinance 2034 is approved and adopted. And that concludes all of our new business for this evening. We have any committee reports from the council? We have several staff reports, folks I'd like to call on. Uh, uh, Brandon, you got an update. I know you met with folks on the kind of the medical on um, COVID reemergence issues. Yes, sir. I was able to participate today in health and medical call with the county and kind of just getting an update on the number of cases in Baldwin County and the status of the hospitals and testing centers and vaccination clinics that are available. 
Uh, don't want to get into the specific numbers of the hospitals, but I will tell you that the hospitals right now are packed with COVID cases. Uh, very, the ICUs are full and got several people on ventilators right now. So not to scare anyone, but it's definitely making its return. And <clears throat> do want to let everyone know that, you know, the vaccinations um, are helping because of the numbers that they were reporting today, that 90 to 95 percent of those that are hospitalized are not vaccinated. So vaccines aren't making a difference. So testing sites is, um, I know for those that are, you know, feeling, having the symptoms and want to get tested, there's a new number you can text your zip code to, and I'll be sure to get with um, Lauren and we'll get this on our website, but 438829, text your zip code to that number, and it'll give you some testing sites in the area. Because I know that now that the symptoms are coming back, that's been a major question is, hey, where can we get tested? And as far as vaccination clinics, I'm happy to report that starting today, as a matter of fact, at South Baldwin Infirmary, behind the hospital itself, there's a building there. They didn't state exactly which one. But from 7 to 9, Monday through Thursday, they are doing walk-up vaccinations. You do not have to register anything else. And that is the Pfizer vaccine. Um, a lot of this information can be found on the Alabama Department of Health, Public Health website. They have a COVID-19 dashboard and a lot of good information there. So if there's something that I'm missing or not getting out there, be sure to visit that adph.org and look at the COVID-19 website. Thank you, Brandon. Yes, sir. Next up, uh, uh Discussion, Noel. I want you to kind of update us on some of the drainage work we've got going around, on, going on around the city. Uh, yes, sir. Since last week, and apologize for being here Monday, um, but we did get to the east side of town on uh, East Twenty First Avenue and got from Third uh, to Fifth Street, got north and south side of the road done, and uh, we have been working on East Twenty Fourth Avenue in between Sixth uh, and Seventh Street. So then we'll start working still more. There's more to do. We can stay on the east side for, for a while. But also we have a project on West uh, 23rd Avenue in between 2nd Street and 3rd Street, improving uh, that drainage and also on uh, East Fairway. So there's a lot going on with, uh, but unfortunately what Brandon was saying, we we roughly have about 10 guys out right now. They are coming trickling in coming back with their negative tests coming up you know come back so we are we are struggling on that aspect as well but we'll just continue on as it comes online and uh just stay on it as hard as we can we have a bid that's uh, that's out september 1st we'll uh, get uh, receive bids back on additional help for uh, ditch cleaning so it's definitely something we need and so we have that assistance coming in so uh, we're just hitting the hot spots where there's a problem. We'll get off that project and move on to something if something arises. Well, we, we've noticed over uh, the, the last storm events, and, and not just storms, but heavy rains, where our ditches that are dumping water into the intercoast or into the lagoon are flowing pretty well. They're not even full, but our lateral ditches that run and connect our homes to the ditch need cleaning out. We've got culverts that are, that are, that are silted in. And Sally really pointed out and, and added to all of those issues. So we're now working with our crew and put, uh, in September, we'll be putting another crew in place to work and try to get all these lateral ditches to where they can drain into the main ditches that are that are doing a good job of getting the water out of the city. So important aspect of moving forward and reacting to changes through these last storms. So And one more that. bid that we do have out is from the golf course going to in between uh, Magnolia Circle and Regency, um, not Regency Townhomes, I believe, but that ditch there and all the way up to 59, we have to be able to clean that ditch out and just get all of that vegetative debris out. We cleaned it after the storm, but it's just, it, it needs it again. So it's, it's nonstop. Thank you, Noel. Dr. Aiken, anything to report? I know y'all had a, a busy morning. We had all, all of our teachers to go this morning. Uh, 
And so that was good to have everybody everybody back. Just I think probably most of you heard that on Friday we announced a mask mandate uh, for students in grades two through 12. Uh, that was not done without a lot of thought and a lot of input. It was pretty frustrating um, as local school system not really getting um, the guidance. We're getting the guidance, but not the recommendations from state health uh, department. But we're, as a lot of other school systems are doing, we're fighting through. And you've seen every school system in Mobile and Baldwin County do the same. So just have patience with us. We're, we're doing what's best for our kids, and we will we'll get there. So we'll see. Thank you, Dr. Hagan. And I noticed that the, the majority or a lot of us have on masks today. It's not mandated by the city. It's preferred that we're requesting that you consider it when you come in groups. But I, I see that I think all of us are reacting to the new news that we, we, we need to be a little more careful and make sure we're not part of it spreading more than, 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 than necessary. So uh, thank you, guys. That's all that we have. Is there anyone here that wants to present this or make Make a statement to the city. Randy. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. I'm Randy Davis. And uh, in past years, I was able to, to work with your mayor and many other council members uh, working with the city. It was always a pleasure, always a lot of fun. Uh, I'm now working at Columbia Southern University in the governmental affairs department and working alongside of Dr. Joe Wilkins. What a great culture they have developed there, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Seeing the police and fire department people here tonight, that's one of the high priorities that, uh, that Columbia Southern University has, and we have students from all over the country participating in that program. So I'm honored to be on their staff. It's a pleasure to be with you. On Mondays and Tuesday nights, uh, I travel to four or five counties to visit with uh, city councils just like yourselves, and everybody's pretty much going through the same thing. And I hate to see COVID back in our communities because it's uh, very tough. But thank you for letting me speak, and uh, uh, always so welcome to be here, Mayor. Thank you very much. Randy, how many years were you a state representative for Baldwin County? 16 years. So he fought battles for us <laughs> in the session in Montgomery on a regular basis, and we miss you. So well, and, and I, I back in our area. I loved the work, and you always brought good, uh, good, meaningful things to the to the legislature. And I, it's, it was easy to fight for you, so it was it was fun. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else with anything to share? Mayor, I got one thing I thought of. Okay, is is like for uh, I don't know what we can do about it. Uh, Lee and Andy to look at our ordinance for trees um, as it's been brought to my attention after Hurricane Sally I understand that when a tree falls over from somebody else's yard and hits your house your insurance it's a battle always always right now we have people that have these trees that are leaning even though they're still good they're not straight up they're leaning and potential another storm will drop that on their house again so i like to look at our ordinance and see if there's something that we can do to have that landowner take that tree out so it doesn't fall on the neighbor's house and to see if we can work through something to you know require that to be done you know, if it's a straight up tree, it's different. But if it's already leaning, if we have another storm like we did with a lot of rain, it's going to fall and hit the neighbor's house again. And some of them's on vacant lots and some are not. So I'd like to look, for y'all to look at that if you could and see if we can work something out for an ordinance where we can require or get some help to take these trees down so it doesn't damage a neighbor's house or something again, if y'all would. I appreciate that. Thank you, Joe. Did I see a hand raised back here? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, he, please. We're broadcasting this uh, through Facebook Live, and uh, they will hear you better in your questions and comments uh, through the microphone. Thank you, Mayor and City Council members. A little nervous. Um, it's kind of hard to follow, you know, with the, the news on the virus and everything. So, um, but life is going on out there with the tourism. And that's what my um, 
what I wanted to speak about. And I'm just going to read because I have it down here. Sorry. Um, okay. So my name is Terry, and I'm here, you know, really on behalf of the residents and owners who care about Gulf Shores, our beaches, our properties, and the residents' um, properties. As an owner resident since the beginning of December 2020 in a sea of owners who rent their properties, it's been eye-opening to say the least and not in a good way, um, but it doesn't have to be this way. Um, last Friday, one of our security cameras was going off like crazy. We observed several guys from the rental uh, door next door and they were at our sand fence throwing things and you know we couldn't make out clearly what they were doing so i called i was not home at the time i called um, the gulf shores non-emergency numbers i've done in the past and they sent an officer out we explained what was seen on the camera um, we ended up having to call the officer back out because we saw damage in three different places to our sand fence and our, you know on our property so, and I have the incident report number. Um, the next morning, Saturday, which is my favorite day, um, at least until three o'clock, I stepped outside, um, you know, enjoying the view. And I looked over to the left and saw a woman with a shovel digging on the dunes and taking the shovel and just like destroying the dunes. I didn't know, you know, what to do. And yet I thought it was my duty to call in case of, you know, the beach mice, the turtles, et cetera. Um, so there's been many, um, incidences. This was just over two days, but I was shocked when I tallied up, um, the number of calls made, um, from our family to, to the Gulf Shores non-emergency number. Um, it was 21 times since December. So the majority have been because of the renters next door. Um, and yes, we've tried to resolve it with the owner, um, of that property um, over, you know, concerns such as contractor trash on our property, dead fish and fish parts on our driveway, oyster shells being thrown over, open bonfires um, with the Christmas trees for the dunes. I mean, I could just go on and on about all the incidences. Um, she's, she said that I had to put up with things at, um, she had to put up with things at her personal house which was just down the street and that we bought a house in the middle of 90% renters. So just call the police. She didn't want to deal with it and um, didn't want to discuss it. She says she's also called the police several times. So she says there is something in the, the contract, but obviously it's in small print um, about the dunes and about um, turtle nests, et cetera, to inform uh, the renters. I've also seen parents with, you know, their babies in the water on double red flag days. And that was after we lost, you know, Deputy Smith, um, Easter egg hunts with over a dozen kids in the dunes, shovels, holes, people drawing pentagrams up and down on the beach, dogs running loose constantly, illegal dumping of trash. I mean, I can just go on and on um, with, please, the point, okay, so the point is in, the, you know, in the beginning, we heard all these stories that there were fines and, and such that if you call, they, you know, they actually come out, they give fines or they give a, war a warning, but now it's just not happening anymore. I don't know what, you know, what it is, but I think that, so the point is that I think we have some recommendations that would help and to protect everyone and to cause, you know, um, you know, less damage and destruction to our, you know, beautiful Gulf Shores. So um, what I recommended and other people have, these are some other recommendations also is to hold the owners accountable. And that's the point of this is just, if we could please hold the owners of these rental properties accountable, like have them responsible for sharing these rules and they either have to have it, you know, checked off on a computer form of some sort, or they have to verbally tell you know, these, their renters, or the, perhaps the management company does that. Um, also maybe have a designated beach patrol person. So we don't have to constantly take up the time of the, the, our, you know, wonderful officers and, um, you know, or, or if they're in the case of damage that we could, 
you know, somehow hold them accountable. So I have to call out someone tomorrow is coming out to fix that damaged um, sand dune fence and pay, you know, pay for that. Um, the other is some other beaches. They have, you know, trash buckets to help, you know, clean up um, trash that's on the beach that was also in there. I had a whole list of things that, but I didn't, you know, it, it seems like it's long. So, but there's a whole list of things that have, that are happening out there. And it's, you know, on Gulf Shores Facebook page, which Jenna will be speaking about next there. And, um, you know, just beach etiquette or um, post more signs or just something. It's very, um, it's very concerning <laughs> and to say the least. And I, it's, it's very stressful. It's like you want to, you know, protect the, pro the sand dunes and protect everything that we're supposed to be doing, being lawful. And yet the renters are not doing that. And I just, so that. Where, where is your home? Uh, on West Beach. Yeah. Um, Jenna, do you want to talk? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I just, hi. Thank you. I just wanted to add to that because I've been con connecting with a lot of uh, residents, um, people who own property, clean houses, and own rentals here. So um, I'm speaking on behalf of over 356 locals and even some tourists um, who just had enough. This year has been especially brutal, you know, for everyone. They've definitely seen a difference um, this year with regards to certain behaviors. Um, locals and tourists are all over social media, like never before, talking about uh, posting their experience with Gulf Shores. Um, locals are posting about encounters with their experience with horrible renters and tourists. And tourists have been posting about awful fellow uh, tourists and as well as um, they, you know, locals who have been unkind or unwelcoming, they've said. So this is not just affecting locals. This is affecting the tourism industry as well. Um, Gulf Shores motto of, you know, small town, big beach is being threatened. Uh, there's articles, here's an article from one place where uh, Gulf Shores is listed now as a, a place, a beach to avoid, top five U.S. beaches to avoid, visit, and five to avoid. Gulf Shores is now on there because it's, you know, crowded, overdeveloped, and trash and traffic and noise um, and things like that. Um, um, sorry. So... You know, this used to be a family-friendly place. It's been known to be family-friendly, to have great values, you know, small town, big beach. Um, I mean, we've met uh, people from all over the country come to Gulf Shores, and we've met some amazing tourists here, you know, tourists who we've shared laughs with, who left us freshly caught Gulf fish to share dinner with. We've also met some not-so-nice people, people who've um, destroyed our property, people who've left uh, feces in microwaves when they checked out, people who've trespassed on private property, harassed and harmed sea turtles, uh, let their kids swim on double uh, red flag days, and more. Uh, I think most tourists fall somewhere in between. They're, they just are maybe uneducated about some, some things like, um, the, you know, beach, the turtles, and things like that. Um, and so we're just asking for, you know, there's a lot of residents who are local who go out there. They try to pass out red uh, turtle safe lights. They try to inform uh, tourists, um, but you know, it's hard because we need not always to be responsible for that. We need to hold these property owners and managers accountable and responsible. You know, we should not have to deal with our property being destroyed, with being harassed, with feeling unsafe at our place of employment, to have our environment and wildlife threatened and destroyed. Gulf Shores is a family-oriented town with values. We should do everything possible to embody our motto, small town, big beach. Um, those kids, they're the future of our town and they deserve better. I have a lot of people who've messaged me who want to be a part of this, their name on this. Um, here we have Stefan Caro, who is employed by Cabana Beach. Um, he's had numerous encounters where, that has resulted in physical threats and having to involve law enforcement. 
uh, we've had condo owners who have had enough, whose um, renters have left dirty diapers, feces in the microwave and um, oven. We had, I mean, just page after page of people dealing with these with these issues and who's had enough. Um, I, we we're, I mean, we can come up with, I mean. We have, like we said, we have, we do have some suggestions that we can, if if it's upon us, I would ha be happy to take it upon us and come up with some solutions. Sure. No, I understand. Are you part part of the council, no, or I'm just? A, I'm, a, I'm a citizen. Okay, and I'm uh, speaking on behalf of me. I'm a resident. Their residences. I'm be speaking on behalf of over 30, 356 residences and tourists. Really? And yes, and we are just asking for, um, you know, even let's say requiring the property owners or um, the management companies to verbally or, you know, written, you know, have them sign something, you know, informing them, just educating them. Um, Another citizen, you know, had the problem with the, you know, the turtle safe lights, and she said they're out in the welcome center, um, and she tries to go out there. That was her issue, too, with, and she's a part of Share the Beach Volunteers. So, I mean, we, I'd be happy to come up with more solutions. We do have some very good ideas to get this addressed, but I just, people, People haven't had have had enough, and we just want to make this place a great place to live like and you've visit. You've got some of that in writing, and if you will put it together and send it to my office, then we'll take a look at it and communicate back with you and see if there's anything we can do to help you in this process. And uh, it sounds like y'all have done a lot of research, and mm -hmm. uh, it will it would it would be good for us to be able to look at what you've done and 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 kind of understand a little bit better exactly the scale of what you're talking about and exactly Certainly. where it is and Certainly. whether it's condominium renters or whether it's single family home rentals renters and whether it's permanent renters that are here working or if it's just those kind of information to kind of get an understanding of what you're you're, you're discussing in more spe specificity so. okay certainly thank you so much for your time thank appreciate you. it yes sir On a lighter note, I just want to thank you guys. I'm, my name's Eddie McDonald. I'm president of the local pickleball club. <clears throat> Our club's had called. A good night. We we've had a great night, and that's what I'm here to. I'm here to thank you guys for this because this has been. Uh, I, I, I've lived here going on four years now. Uh, just a little bit about our club. Uh, our, our club's called Bama Beach Pickleball Club. We've got over 200 members in our club that play. Uh, we have no dedicated courts in South Baldwin County, so this is going to be the first set of, of, of public dedicated courts. Uh, there's none in Orange Beach. There's none in Foley. There's no, so you guys are going to be the first. So you guys are going to be all over the news. Just know in the next uh, in the next week or so, because we're going to publicize and it's going to go all over the pickleball world that Gulf Shores is getting pickleball courts with lights. Uh, but but I just want to uh, recognize. Billy and Shirley Reeves, I want y'all to stand up just a second. These guys <clears throat> have lived here 12 years, and they've been pushing pickleball ever since they've been here. And, you know, it's just now, I'm a, it, hey, it's better late than never, but at least now we're getting some courts. And, we, and I just want to thank you guys so much for, for doing this. You don't realize how important it is to not just them, but there's a lot of people that, that you're not aware of that, that play this sport. And there's a lot of people that don't even know what it is that are going to end up playing it once they realize their court's there. Because that's what happens with pickleball. When you build it, they'll come. And when you build it, people are going to learn how to play. And anybody can play. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what age you are. You can play. And I encourage everybody, once these things get built, to get out there. And, and we will. We have a blast. We have a – we all of our friends I, – I can speak for me and my wife. All of our friends are either people we go to church with, people we play pickleball with. And we have a good time. And so I'm just so thankful, thankful to you, uh, you uh, Mr. Dykin, for 
for getting this. And, and I know Billy and Shirley are very excited. And we got over 200 uh, members who are excited as well. So I just want to give you a pickleball magazine to give you an idea of what it is. So. <laughs> Anybody else? Tony. Haven't been here in a while. Olympic sport. We've both been here a long time, Robert. Uh, it's called growing pains for a lot of these people to understand, you know. Uh, we were here, I don't know when you got here, I got in 1980. I know Joe been here forever, you know. Our town's beautiful. Uh, Steve was telling he's following me on our adventure. My wife and I was married 50 years, and we took off for a week to do the 1,000-mile yard sale. And I'm going to tell you what I saw in Tennessee and Kentucky, which was surprising. I went through all these little towns, and they were immaculate. I was actually shocked. The old antebellum homes were redone. The little shotgun houses were redone. Gus Shores needs to just concentrate on that, keeping our town pretty. And uh, the only other solution is... Rob, make a declaration that anybody not here by 1985 leave, okay? And we can make it peaceful again, okay? But with growth, we get other problems, you know. My wife lectures at me every day going down Roscoe Road to trash, you know, and the big argument is Gulf Shores, it's Orange Beach, I have to hear that. My renters call me up, Mr. D, the city told me I'm not in the school system. I say, yes, you are. They say I'm not, you know, we go through this. But that's not why I'm here. The bridge, Robert. I was happy when I was traveling. I see that you counteracted my buddy, Tony Keenan. Uh, as y'all know, I went through this a long time. I got seven years with this garbage, with this bridge. And I supported it from day one. We need this bridge. They bought the property, except one. We need another access. And I don't care what these people that says the bridge is nowhere else. Whatever they want to say, when it hits the Beach Express and that bridge goes over, we dumping more traffic on Canal Road because what is it? Twenty-six percent of the people that go through our red light end up taking a left, going to Orange Beach. We need another road, and we will put them out of business in Orange Beach. You keep our road free, and the state of Alabama is going to have three bridges, not just the new one and our old one that we have. But I asked the city council. Robert, you did a great job. I was traveling. I read your letter. I thought it was great. All of you get real vocal. It's time to get downright nasty and dirty and tell the state of Alabama who we are. And we want our fair share. We pump them millions every year, and we want our share, and we want our bridge. That bridge will help because we all know in the near future that bridge is going to go further than where it's at. But for right now, we need that bridge. We all see the traffic every day. You know, now I used to get up early and miss it. Now it's getting they're getting up early. And I tell you what, last night we couldn't even eat in Gulf Shores. I know COVID hit a lot of the restaurants and everybody else was slamming us. So we ended up, you know, going to Foley. I'm needing Foley. But I just call in to ask all of you, please fight the state. And the, the funniest thing, Rob, I took a picture. I didn't bring my glasses. But uh, you know my neighbor, uh, Bobby Peralta, on the property so to stay. There's a for sale sign on that property now, Steve. I can show you. I don't have my glasses. I can show you a thing, but it actually listed his home, four bedrooms, three baths for sale. So that's what kind of shocked me when I, I was sent that uh, advertisement. You know, that's right on the route, you know, so I don't know what's going on. Do you know more than I do on this? I, I do not. I, I know that, that we are supportive of uh, the Aldot Bridge. Uh, and, but we're not against the, the, the bridge at the wharf. I honestly believe the way the future is going and that we will need all three of them. I believe that, that, the, that the state could build their bridge and uh, the, the bridge company could build their new lane and we, we'd still need more. Yeah, we need more because you know, what is it, Baldwin County is building the new uh, boat docks with all the boat ramps and all that. That's going to bring in a ton more people down Roscoe and Beach yeah. Express. We will, uh, we're working closely with the governor's office, making sure that they understand with ALDOT too, exactly what the city of Gulf Shores is concerned about. 
and we're really not against what Orange Beach is doing. I understand why Tony's doing it. Uh, I, I don't know that, I, I wouldn't do it the same way, but he's trying to protect the revenue stream that the city of Orange Beach has. And I'm, we're not worried about that. We have no revenue stream. We're worried about, and when we talk about we, we're not talking about we being Gulf Shores. We're talking about we, we being this island. Everybody in this island's got to get out of here in a storm issue. Everybody goes back and forth to Foley on a regular basis, or at least up to Publix and areas, even if you're not going to Foley, just going to the northern part of Gulf Shores on a regular basis. We're overwhelmed with traffic. We, can need, we need all three bridges. I don't think it has to be us or them. I think we can focus on getting them all. I tell you, I'm going to tell you, I left Shelby County day before yesterday, 17-mile backup. People coming back from this beach, from Panama City and us, I guess, coming back down that interstate, you know. Well, but I'm Brent, done. Is Gavin, you going to say anything today? Are you on? Uh, <laughs> I'll say it while I'm up in the water. I know he talked to you. You know, I know you're cleaning all the ditches. We just have a little bit of short ditch on our road, Creek Road, and we are in the city limits. So when your men are taking a break and sleeping, send one of them on Creek Road and... <laughs> Scoop up our 40, 50 foot of ditch and we'll be real happy and we'll talk proud about you, Rock. Thank you, Tony. Anybody else? I don't know how you follow that, but if you want to try, the mic's open. Is there, if Mayor, just a, a quick reminder that our school board meeting is just Thursday, 5 p.m. at the venue. Lots of parents have expressed concerns over um, our latest mask, man mask mandate and that will be the opportunity to share their views and opinions at our meeting at 5 p.m. in this very venue Thursday. Kevin, thank you. Anybody else? Motion. Hearing none? Motion adjourned. We have a motion. Is there a second to second. adjourn? Second. We stand adjourned. Thank you for coming.